te in fausto una procella che oscura il cielo e il mare splende in fausta poi la stella ogni corte fa cute Hello and welcome to our next edition of Music Discoveries. Today our guest is an internationally renowned opera singer who sang with many opera companies around the world, including a Metropolitan Opera. He's also a winner of many prestigious competitions and prizes, including Richard Tucker Award, for opera singers. An American bass, Valerian Ruminski. Hello, Valerian, and welcome to our program. Hello, je dobre. Hey, Valerian, so how come, why opera? Yeah, I, I always wanted to be a pop star. Opera was, was my second choice, really, because opera, opera came to me. I mean, it just turns out, I kept trying to sing pop, and I was in bands and stuff like that. And then finally, it just, I couldn't sing high enough. My voice was not high enough. I was not a tenor. Most pop stars are tenors. So like there's tenor. very few bassos that are singing in pop songs, you know. And now I can do it because my technique is so good as an opera that my top, see, I was able to conquer the top as a basso. And because I could, and, and the way I conquered it was by singing jazz and Sinatra. Somebody loves you It's no good unless he loves you All the way Happy to be near you When you need someone to cheer you All the way Taller than the tallest tree that's how it's got to be I did not conquer my top. I didn't get my top by singing opera per se. I got it by bringing the voice forward and forward. bright and 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 uh, natural, forward, bright and forward, and the sound is true, true sound. I exactly know what you mean. It's not affected. The only see that's the problem with most of the singers today, is that they think that when you when you have to sing a high note, you've got to grab or squeeze it or something and it, it's that's not how it's done yeah it's it open and doesn't carry if it's too squishy and pushy up, up there it's a different the problem is, is that you need to learn how to sing on top outside of the passaggio so that you can sing in the passaggio now will be the it's, other it's, that will be the other program about singing which will be actually very interesting so i learned a lot of the classic music by singing in the church in the mm -hmm. boys choir and I started to learn how to read notes. I, I started auditioning for mm -hmm. solos in the choir, in the Messiah, mm -hmm. uh, for He Shall Purify. I couldn't get the solos because my note reading was not good. My voice was good, but my note reading was lousy. And I, start, I really started studying a little more how to read the notes. I didn't know the difference between a, an eighth note or a quarter note or a half note. But I finally got a solo because, because the notes were almost all half notes, and it was in Bernstein's Chichester Psalm, in Hebrew. So my first solo was in Hebrew. Yisachach Adonai. Yisachach Adonai, Eloheinu. Here we are. Okay, I was in Tosca in the bell choir when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. In the theater that 20, 30 years later, I would stage an opera at. We have to tell the audience that uh, Valerian is not just an opera singer, but he is also founder of the opera company. Opera. So Nichols Buffalo City Opera in Buffalo. They used to make nickels with the buffalo on it. Yeah, I've seen the, I've seen the logo. Very clever. So that's Very our clever. nickname, you know. But but so far it's been uh, it's been difficult financially, but artistically it's uh, very gratifying 
to be mm -hmm. able to put on the stage what you want to put on the stage and make the choices that you want to make to make the opera what you want to make it. Because there's lots of examples of people who put on an opera and they put they put so much pressure on Mr. Mozart or Mr. Rossini to make their opera good because they don't pay attention to anything else. Mm -hmm. Lousy sets, mm -hmm. lousy costumes, has so-so singers, bad orchestra, not enough rehearsal. But they say, oh yeah, yeah, but we're doing Mozart. Yeah, yeah, Mozart's gonna fix it for us. You know, can't just rely on Mr. Mozart to make the whole mm -hmm. opera for you. I wanted my company to be as good as any regional opera company in the country. I want somebody from New York City that goes to the Met or New York to, or to New York City Opera to see my opera and say, oh, that's just as good. We did seven seasons of regular opera. The, the most adventurous mm -hmm. I got was Don Pasquale. That's about as strange of an opera that I did. Mm -hmm. But in our eighth season, we did a we we did a commission. We commissioned an opera in our third season. Mm -hmm. It took five years for us to get it on the stage. Um, and we did it in a much larger house. We were in an 1100 seat house for seven years. Oh, and then wow. we moved to a 3000 seat house in our eighth season for this premiere of Shot. It's called S-H-O-T, Shot, with an exclamation point. And it's the assassination of President McKinley in 1901. Who, who was the composer? Persis Vihar. And this mm -hmm. is a woman composer. She was in her late yeah. 70s when she wow. composed. This was her eighth opera. And uh, because of our company, it's the largest uh, production she's ever had of one of her mm -hmm. operas on mm -hmm. the stage. Or you're singing in it? Oh yeah, I sing in most of the shows uh, once or twice. Uh, when we did Tosca, I did not sing and I just produced it. But we do, uh, in Christmas time, we do an opera called Amal and the Night Visitors. Of course, of course, a, yeah. I sang uh, the mother a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna do it again sometime soon. It's been, we did it seven years in a row. It's a very nice and, opera, yeah. Very and we did, it, we did it with the, uh, with the bit organ. We did it with the Wurlitzer organ theater organ and a theater that was equipped with the oh, organ interesting. and it That's makes interesting. it beautiful 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 yeah because it makes this voluptuous sound beautiful sound organ but sound. i directed i directed most of the amount so i was directing the smaller so our big shows in june were about one hundred thousand dollar productions the shows in december the amal was about a twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollar show wow. Wow. So I was doing the small shows and then I was letting, I was hiring actual directors to do the... To be on both sides. I think it's very difficult. I mean, I have a little bit of this experience because I organized some concerts and I also was a founder of Canadian Athletic Opera. Uh, and I know how difficult it is. It's a, it takes totally different mindset. You would have to raise money. That's very difficult. You know, you have to get people interested in opera. Well, when you have the money, you don't worry about it. So... Uh... So I had, by the time the show was on the stage, I usually would have as much as I needed. Mm -hmm. I certainly had enough mm -hmm. to pay the orchestra because if you don't pay the orchestra, the union will destroy you. They will rip you to shreds. So you mm -hmm. have to have, you have to have uh, cashier's checks or money orders mm -hmm. ready in those envelopes on the day that the orchestra sits in the pit. But uh, I had to raise a little bit of money in the few days following a few of my productions. It's difficult business, I must say. You fundraise money, you direct, you do this. But your main occupation is to sing opera. So tell us about your characters. You said you like to play the kings. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm as we all are, I'm a, I'm a prisoner of my voice category. I can't sing other things. Basso means low. I mean, it's its lowest uh, voice category. So, but a basso cantante is more flexible than uh, like a basso, basso cantante, buffo, buffo, a buffo who's a comic bass. Usually the comic basses, their voices aren't very pretty. They have kind of woofy, heavy, thick voices, you know. But basso cantantes are known as the chameleons, you know. We can, mm -hmm. we can become a buffo. We can become, mm -hmm. you know, a Wagner. I, I'm starting to sing some Wagner. I'm doing these oh, things. Yes. I'm full full lyric i'm a full lyric basso mm -hmm. cantante so mm -hmm. uh but uh that's the that's the key and most of the time because the voice is so low that's why we get assigned these kind of characters who have this kind of gravitas mm -hmm. you know where we're kings and leaders and criminals and all that because we we're down here and we yes i love it i love it i will kill you i will hey 
you know. No, I just I just listened to you today on YouTube, and I've heard this beautiful recording. Yeah, that was the Opera de Montreal production. <laughs> Dai con chi te ti ho chiamato, cielo di anzi giungea, gravi noelle vecchia. Vi piace dirlo, il messaggero s'avanti. Ordi volcano al tempio, muovi o guerrier, le secchiarmi ti cinge la vittoria. sung Ramfis since no that was the king actually I sing Ramfis in uh, Alabama for the opera Birmingham but I'm going to be going to Denmark and Aarhus to do the national tour the Denmark tour of Aida and I'll be singing Ramfis for the first time in like 15 years how do you so, manage to get all these invitations because it's, especially right now it's very difficult I know you just uh, sang La Boheme yeah, well, I was lucky because yeah. that's the that's the Opera Europa uh, a tour, mm -hmm. and I didn't know about the tours. But because I run an opera company, I was hiring a company to bring. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to schedule Aida to do Aida, so I, I contacted a company that has an Aida set, mm -hmm. and I offered to rent their set. He said, "Oh, you're a basso. We need a basso for our bohème for our tour." So he runs the tours, and he rents the sets. Pure coincidence. Yeah, so now I'm trying to bring them to Buffalo for a performance of Barber, and we might do Aida in 2022. But right wow. now he's he's hiring me to do these performances. So I did a bohème in Florida, and I'm going to do two bohèmes in South Carolina next month. Shows for next year. I'm doing Barbers and Rigolettos next year. Great. So let's talk about your other musical interests. You are producing your new CD, Impresario. Yes. Tell us. As Impresario. Impresario is the name I've taken uh, because I don't want to just want to use my name, Valerian Rominsky, as the artist. So I want to, so I am an Impresario. What the depths of your heart means to You know, it's not so kosher in the opera world you know they they expect you to cross over and sing broadway jazz but when you do pop music it's it's sort of considered you not very high class this. so this is my cd here all of us and i've got a lot of songs on the back and uh i do one remake of uh, the cats in the cradle by harry chapin and that's he was a it was a big song in the 70s people everybody knows the cats in the cradle it's on the radio all the time this is sort of a techno trance version of uh, I didn't intend it actually 
when I started writing it, I was just writing chord structures. Mm -hmm. And when, as I was writing it, the song Cats in the Cradle kept coming into my mind. And I realized that the chord structure was fitting. So I, I did you it. You compose the words, you compose the music and you sing it. about singing and I think you also recorded a little video about how to sing high. We all <laughs> had to learn how to sing high notes. And but it's a bad word. It's even a bad yeah, word. It's a bad word because we think high. high. So we think high, we have to be high. Our voice is not vertical, it's horizontal. Yeah, exactly. High, I wish we used the words, I use the words tight and loose. But as a mezzo, you don't have to, well, I'm not sure. Technique wise, did you have a hard time? There was a time that I had to sing Charantola, but still it was very high to approach those, you know, bees, 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 and you want to have it in full voice. Yeah. You know? Jumping up and trying to reach a high note is not the way to sing. Better that you think of the voice as an instrument that is moving forward or backward with no tension when you reach forward and no tension when you pull back. So, to demonstrate, most singers that have problems are singers that are worrying about the fact that they have to reach for a high note. And that note is not high. It's not a matter of reaching for a box of cereal on the top of the shelf. What you have to understand is that the voice is operating forward or backward, tenseness to looseness. Even though there's a firmness behind when the voice is loose and a firmness when the voice is tense and high. And let me give you an example. So if you want to sing right, you're not going to think about high or low. You're going to think about looseness or firm and think forward or backward on the track forward on the track backward no reaching for the cereal box on the top of the shelf Valerian uh, made his debut uh, the Metropolitan Opera a few years ago, and he also was a winner of very prestigious awards, Richard Tucker Award, Sullivan Foundation Award. Tell us yeah, about Yeah, that's all. Well, my debut was Zuniga in, in Carmen. 
but I was getting offers to sing lead roles for other companies. You know, mm -hmm. the new Israeli opera offered me a mm -hmm. uh, spot of Fuchil in Rigoletto. Mm -hmm. And I was, they offered me a role in La Juive. Mm -hmm. And then I did Billy Budd in Israel, as opposed to singing three words in an opera. I mean, the Met was giving me these tiny little assignments. Yeah, okay. okay, you mm -hmm. know, but I was not singing in front of anybody. Mm -hmm. So I had to make the choice and I was getting offers. Other companies were offering. Mm -hmm. Kansas City Lyric was offering me. Mm -hmm. Canadian companies were offering me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave the Met and I'm going to go and I'm going to sing big roles in medium houses as opposed to tiny little roles in the big house. Yes, always and, a choice. And that, then that means that the Met, you know, took them seven years to bring me back because mm -hmm. I made the choice to leave, you know, then you, mm -hmm. then they don't want you back for a while because you, you're no longer part of the family. So I left the family, you see. So that's why I'm only a, intermittently singing. So I sang uh, I Puritani by Bellini. I was in the national broadcast with Natrebko. I played her father. <laughs> And then I came back for Boris Kudinov in 2010 and 2011. And the funny thing was, is that, you know, Gergiev was conducting it and it was mostly wow. the Kirov singers. So my name, Valerian Ruminsky, sounds like I'm Russian, you know. So they needed a singer for the opening role. I was going to sing Nikitish, and he's the first uh -huh. singer. And at the Metropolitan, they put the singers on the marquee in chronological order. So they said, well, we didn't want to hire a bass with the name John Smith because my name was going to be first so they hired me because my name was Valerian Ruminski. So I got to sing that role because my name was first on the marquee and it looked good to the Met. You know, like, oh, uh -huh. he fits. He fits, you know. And I've been singing Onyegin for years because of my name. I've heard this aria and you really conquered the language. The Russian yeah, language. Yeah, I mean, I've had so many coachings with so many. But the problem with Russian is that there's, you know, Russia has, what, nine time zones, 12 time zones? So you yeah. have the, the, the accents and the, the way that is spoken from one side of Russia is totally different from the way they speak it on the other side of Russia. So if you get a coach from the eastern part of Russia, he tells you to sing it like this, and you get a coach from the western part of Russia, and he tells you to sing it like that. But so still, would, you sounded Russian. I could understand every word. So I choose now to sing it the way I want to sing it. I can't please every coach. If I get a Western coach that pisses off the Eastern coach, if I get an Eastern coach, the Western coach is angry. So then when I went to Carnegie Hall, I got hired to sing Maid of Orleans, the Tchaikovsky. And I walked in the door and they said, Oh, I'm an American. <laughs> what? We thought you Russian. What? We were Rubinsky. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to get a coaching to sing this role. They were all, they thought I was Russian when they hired me. Good thing you didn't change your name. I have an easier name than like Shepinsky or, you know. But the problem is, is that I don't get hired for American roles. I don't get hired to sing American. I'm an American basso. And the only time I got a chance to really sing that stuff was when I sang Victor Herbert on the CD. I did a collected works of Victor Herbert. I went to London. I sang and I, I recorded at Abbey Road with the Beatles recorded. You know, we, I did Babes in Toyland. And I did Jerome Kern's Have a Heart. And this is American oh Americana. The night in jail, took up the tale. We sang together there to sleep of a fair. Some breezes fan the listening
reason I got hired was because the pianist, Bill Hicks, was my accompanist. And he, he told the conductor, this guy is not Russian. He's not Polish. He's American. <laughs> and he can sing this stuff great. And he, the guy That's said, okay, weird. I'll take a That's chance. I'll weird. take a chance. That's really funny story, but it's true. It's true. I mean, I would take you for a Polish guy too. If I, I would love to sing Susanna. I would love to sing Blitch. They would hire me because they think I'm going to walk on stage and talk like I'm going to sing like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, Valeria, and Rubinsky, you know. Do you have any funny stories from opera, you know, that you remember? Like my whole career is a funny story. How is it to work in the opera in the big opera house? Not everything always goes very smoothly. No, when opera fails, it's funny. But I was in I was in a production of Billy Budd in Israel, and we did we did ten performances. Now, who first of all who schedules ten performances of any Benjamin Britten opera? Because uh, you know it's not the most popular stuff. But we had we had a show where you know at the end they hang the guy; he gets hung, and usually they show a shadow of the guy in the background getting in the noose, you know, mm -hmm. but this production, they made it, they, they, they got four guys on a board and they lifted the guy up and he had a, he had a harness on his neck and they put a clip in there and he, you know, they put a yeah, rope. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the rule in opera is that, you know, the more performances that you do, the more likely there's going to be of an accident or of a, <laughs> of a mishap mm -hmm. because, because opera is so complicated that you are you are challenging destiny and fate. The more pr 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 uh, productions you do, uh, mm -hmm. that there's going to be something happening. So mm -hmm. this guy, every night, they would lift him up mm -hmm. and they would drop the board, and he would. Hang. And then in the eighth performance, eighth performance, they lifted him up eight feet off the ground, and then he went like they dropped the board, and then the thing broke. The clip oh. broke, and he fell and he hit the oh. ground. It was a real story. He laid there. He was laying there. Now, we didn't know if he was okay or not. We didn't know if he was hurt. We stopped the show. The so curtain okay. came down. It was five, five minutes, minutes before the end of the opera that they hang him. Five minutes, but they stopped the show. And then as soon as the curtain came down, he jumped up. He was okay. He was all right. But he pretended he's got That's to. So he, he, he ended up that he, he stretched a muscle. He hurt, he hurt one muscle in his leg when he landed. But he was okay. And then they took him off the stage and then they rose the curtain again and they finished the opera. They finished the uh -huh. music and all that. That was one of the strangest uh, things that I have had happen to me in an opera where we stopped the show and then finished it yeah. afterwards. I remember once when a long, long time ago when I played Niklaus in Tales of Hoffman. Hoffman, you know, yeah. There's, there's a scene where Niklaus comes and plays the violin and the prop person so, uh, forgot to put the, the fake violin inside. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that happened in City Op. See, a lot of times in the bigger yeah. companies like the Metropolitan, they don't have a regular rehearsal. They don't have on the stage. Everything is down in the basement. And then you yeah, only yeah, come yeah. up for the show. I mean, the first time you're on the stage with the actual props and the sets is opening night. My debut at the Metropolitan was on a horse, on a real horse, being on a horse. And I never was on the horse until one half hour before the show opened on opening night, they put me on the horse yeah. finally. And I'd never been on a horse before. Oh my gosh, it's a scary thing to do. Yeah. So but that's what happens. They're trying to save money. They try to save money. Most accidents and problems happen in opera because they're trying to save money. They cut corners that they should not cut. Not in opera rehearsals and the poor singers, they have to save themselves. Sometimes I don't know how they do that because you have to jump in and just be ready to do it. You no, know? but that's how you save money. That's how they save money. Less few rehearsals and yeah. less okay. money. And then they... They, they hire singers that aren't as experienced because they're less money. A bit cheaper, yeah. And then you get you get what you pay for. You get mm -hmm. less experience, people mm -hmm. who don't know what the hell they're doing. So what do you think? Where, where is the opera going these days? There's good things and bad things. You know, I think that before the pandemic, we had a lot of creativity, a lot new opera. But that's not going to be the case after the pandemic. But there's The money is not going to be there to be spending on on brand new commissioned opera like it was before before the pandemic everyone was making new operas and there was money being made at, at new opera but i don't think it's gonna stay i think we're gonna be going back to doing rigolettos and barbers and until the money comes back until the companies are back in the black 
But the problem is we cannot change the art form. That's the issue. Is that's the big issue? Yeah. Change? Do we change opera to make it more marketable, or do we do we just market it more? What we have more. I think we cannot change the art form. We cannot change the. You know, you can't cheapen the opera. You can't make it. I mean, especially with the singing. That's the big problem. We have TV now with the American Idol and the America Singer and all that. And people have a bad view of what singing really is. And it's, it's, it's happening on the stages where people who are in charge of hiring singers don't know anything about singing. And they hire people who are bad, who are not good singers. And they are up there and they are making the music of Puccini and the music of Mozart cheap and bad and, and not I good totally to the ear. You. And that's, you know, this is the general audience. That's Broadway, is, Broadway is to be respected. It, it is a viable, it is a wonderful history of Broadway, but mm -hmm. you cannot mm -hmm. take a Broadway singer and, and, and make them sing Puccini, make them sing Verdi. But you can do the opposite. I'm trying to explain to me because opera singer can sing Broadway. People don't realize that. The thing is true with American Idol and with these singers. It's like the minute somebody gets up and says, I'm going to sing an opera aria. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, amazing. Uh, oh. They sing it badly. And everybody's just because they tried, just because they tried. It was like climbing Mount Everest. Well, he tried to climb Mount Everest. You know, he tried to sing Puccini. Give him credit for that. Let's just give him credit for that. Come yeah, on. Yeah. yeah it's it's, it's yeah. a sacrilege, sacrilege. Anyway, so we see what's going to happen with our art. We love to do it. I have uh, friends I think who think to... that we're in a dying art form. I have a lot of uh, friends telling me, you know, it's time to re reinvent yourself. How do you reinvent yourself? Without culture, without music, we know where you Look, it's, like, it's sort of like climate change, right? It's like you and I are not going to live long enough to see the world end because of climate change. It's yeah. going to happen after we're dead. But the same thing is true with opera right now. Opera is not going to end in our lifetimes. You know, it's, we got another, you know, it's still going to be around 15, 20, 30 years from now. Yeah. But yeah. maybe beyond that, you know, maybe it'll start to die out in 2060s, 2070s, something like that. But right now, you and I still have a career. We can have a career because the companies are still there. There's hundreds of opera companies around the world. So there's still lots of jobs out there. And if you know what you're doing, you're going to get hired and you're going to sing and you'll finish your career. But it's a matter of having supplemental income as well. So you can't just sing opera. You got to teach a little bit. For a time, opera was at the top of top of the world as, as, as an art form. It was the yeah. most celebrated art form, you know, but those times are gone. But the, the magic of opera is that it's a live presentation without microphones. Hearing a voice that is not projected through a speaker has a much more powerful emotional impact on the brain of the listener so you know we we tend to look at a speaker and we don't think about the fact that it's a it's adulterating it's yeah. it's uh it's changing what mm -hmm. what what is being generated mm -hmm. but uh so the truth of the sound is what really makes opera the powerful art form yeah that it is valerian it's so nice talking to you I think we, we can talk about opera, about music, about... This is the first of 12 discussions that we're going to have. This, but, but he's a wonderful, wonderful singer. And please check his new recordings, yes. all of us. And world peace, world peace. Area, real peace. And yeah. you would love it. So thank you, Valerian, for being with us. Thank and you, Ms. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. But so... Thank you very thank much. Bye-bye. Good -bye. evening, good evening. Many minds have been lost in a maze They are forced from a long stay